Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, earthquakes, top science news, and some outstanding weather phenomena. We'll get to it all, starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours were mostly quiet. There is a filament eruption for you to notice, which we'll identify momentarily. But first, we've been inside a coronal hole stream, and it is re-intensifying slightly this morning, including the first breach of 600 kilometers per second in months, maybe a few years. There isn't much density to the stream, but we did get another brief geomagnetic storm out of it. These KP5 short-lasting events are not going to ever be scary, but it does seem like relatively weak streams have produced these last two. Does it say something about our magnetic field? Let's take another look at the filament eruption. This one went out to the left, that's behind Earth in its orbit around the Sun, but it does show us the eruption power is rising as we proceed into the new sunspot cycle. Folks, we are indeed entering that period of earthquake warning and excess magnitude risk that we mentioned a few days ago. We're kicking off day one here near the South Atlantic anomaly with 6.5. Also of note, another one more directly under that anomaly. Quick look checking in again on the typhoon situation in the West Pacific. Still slated to head northward, but we're also seeing another system is due to form in its wake, right behind it. Then began its charge northward by the end of the week. Quick stop at NASA's Earth Observatory with a new missions page for biomass. Each segment is clickable where you can learn more about not only the plant life, but how it's being monitored and the ways they hope to improve these observations. Link is below. We're on to a bunch of folks living in those simulated realities we discussed the other day. Despite observations showing the contrary, they got a computer model simulation to have the Arctic warming amplification signature without the sea ice loss. Therefore, they say, it is possible that atmospheric processes alone cause the Arctic amplification. And while that might be true, it would, in this case, be the result of the weaker magnetic field allowing solar plasma to pound the polar cusp. It is also possible that their computer simulation is just lights and clockwork, especially since real observations don't suggest that's how it's going down. An excellent study up next about how the solar storm affects the ground level. We've seen numerous studies from New Zealand confirm the hypothesis that geoelectrics and conductivity play a huge role in the induced currents and electric field reaction. Now, we get that confirmation about Earth's deep electrical structure out of Scotland. Model versus observations revealed the electric field response of natural Earth can strongly modify how that part of the world reacts to space weather. Some maybe get lucky, other regions amplify the problem. We're going to Pakistan next, and not just because their floods broke records that go back to before record keeping began in the area, but accompanying those floods was amazing lightning, including a superbolt and an earth discharge from the ground up. But folks, there's another atmospheric electric phenomenon wrapping things up today. Many have seen videos of these online, and indeed they are very rare. Fifty years ago last month, these crown flashes were first identified in the peer-reviewed literature. And while the journals were not the initial reporting of the phenomenon, that had come back in the 50s, scientists looking to explain them finally found the answer in lightning. Because the high sky sun position is required for these views, we usually can't see the smaller intracloud lightning. But with every one of those flashes, the beam up top moves around. It's actually ice crystals caught in an electric discharge from the cloud up to the ionosphere, completing the global electric circuit, and indeed those pathways jiggle and jostle with every lightning flash below. Now not only does this exemplify water's affinity for electricity, which tells us how the weather works electrically, but if by chance we started to see more of these, it would mean the earth discharging is ramping up, just like with the lightning. We greatly appreciate your support. Tomorrow you will be able to get our book on these topics once again. Our solar terrestrial textbook covers the electric aspect of our world and how it's changing. And remember the PDF version is only available that first day, tomorrow, September 1st. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.